Well, that's where I saw the light of day, and we had uh, a red rooster. I used to chase me all around, around, and fighting you know, all the way. So, let's go back about nine years before that, and that's where Alfred met the light of day. Four mile car, five miles west of this for me. Do you remember? No. Keep going. Okay. <laughs> They moved on to Dexter, and then the next thing you know, they were back at 551 K Street. In the meantime, our folks had bought a house at 551 K Street. But Sister Florence was born in National Mine. He said, well, how did that ever happen? How come, if you lived at 551 East K Street, how come you weren't born at 551 K Street? Well, there's a reason. The best form of transportation back in those days was a streetcar. And there was a streetcar that ran between Nigani and Ishpeme. I pronounced that correctly, didn't I? You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, you got to put an R in an R. got to put an R in an R. Okay. Between Nigani and Ishpeme. Now, ordinarily, the streetcar left at the Briding Hotel in Nigani, went all through town, all the way up to Ishmael, out to the Angela, Lake Angela Mine. But the early streetcar left at 5.30 in the morning. And so Grandpa Wasberg, not that Grandpa, but the original Grandpa Wasberg walked all the way from the uh, end of town, which was about one block from the city limits, and he walked all the way to what they call the powerhouse. The powerhouse is just about where the Mather B is now. So, to have breakfast in the morning, which we can, you know, was usually potatoes, uh, maybe a pork or, chop or two. Pork chop or two. Yeah, lots and lots of yummies, because it had to last the whole day. And he would walk from 551 East K Street all the way over to the powerhouse, catch the 5.30 in the morning streetcar, and ride out all the way to Lake Angeline. That was the end of the line. And then there was two more miles that he had to walk to get over to National Mine. So that's why Florence was born in National Mine. <laughs> he had a football team, and Alfred was on that football team. That was back in the old days when the football field used to run between what is the hot dog stand now and the tennis courts. Uh -huh. Alfred played in that football game. And the one thing I remember, they had so much snow that year that they, the city came out and plowed the field. And we stood on the snowbanks and watched the football game. Now that's hard to believe, but that's the end of October. That's what happens up in the UP. Ah, oh, press May Mr. I interrupt? Okay. While Arthur was growing up, he chauffeured a lady who had lots of money in Nagani, and her name was Fanny Witter. And her favorite friend was Rose Moss. So Arthur would have to chauffeur Fanny Winter and Rose Moss, not once around the island, because once they finished, Fanny would say to Rose, or Rose would say to Fanny, would you like to go again? <laughs> yeah. Yes. So Marie turned into Fanny and I turned into Rose, <laughs> and we would go around the island, not once, not once, quite <laughs> yeah. That's the story of my life right there, chauffeur. See, I'm still chauffeuring. <laughs> All right, so we go. Before he got to the Olympics, of course, he went to Sweden, Norway, did I miss any? Finland. Finland, and then back to Berlin. And he saw the 1936 Olympics when Jesse Owens. Remember Jesse Owens? Yeah, man. Okay, so he was there. You see, back in those days, when there was a violation, the referee, no, the referee blew his whistle, but the umpire blew a horn and he threw the hanky. Nowadays, all they do is they throw the hanky. But back in those days, you used to blow the horn because that meant to say that the play continues on until it was all over, and then they decided what the penalty was, offside and so forth and so on. So we took this horn and we pounded it up the tailpipe of this car. <laughs> <laughs> See, 
And when he started up the car, it sounded like more like a police <laughs> siren, you know. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. And he stepped up. See? And once upon a time, we had as many as 18 people out there for Christmas Eve. But Charles said, and he told me tonight, what? And I never made it to the big table. Never made it. <laughs> never made it to the big table. What happened? He got to the card table. That's where everybody starts, see? And if you move up the line, you get to the kitchen table. But the step beyond the kitchen table is a big one. You have to get up to never made it. a big table. Never made it. Table, see? <laughs>